welcome to the next episode of a lovely yarn podcast maybe it's 11 i don't know i didn't check um i have found that if i wait for the perfect time to film these podcasts it just doesn't happen so um and i want this to be a fun and enjoyable thing that i'm able to do and speaking of that it's been a couple months i think since i filmed my last podcast we've had a lot go on here and it was just too busy for me to be able to really think about this so welcome back I'll put my comfort my comfort my information my contact information down in the description box for this video I'm mostly active on Instagram Amber underscore Helena but again I'll link it down there and then anything I mention during this podcast if there's a link for it I will try to remember to put that in the description box as well so today is October 10th it is amazing here in western Pennsylvania we have been having 80 degree weather this week which is kind of unheard unheard of um, for October and it's beautiful and sunny. It was supposed to rain all day today, and whenever I was thinking about doing this podcast, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to fight with the lighting, but it's perfect. So I'm glad I'm able to do this uh, today. I'm excited to be back because I really do enjoy um, doing this, and it kind of just gives you a sense of community when you're a podcaster. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, well, I guess I can tell you a little bit about what's going on. So in August, the end of August, we went to Maine. We go to Maine every year. Um, so we went for our annual trip to Maine. We go to Bar Harbor, uh, which is near, it's actually where we stay is right beside Acadia National Park. So we like to go and hike and um, just be outdoors. My favorite part is the Rocky Coastline and we will often go down in the evenings into the park, into Acadia. And there's many places that you can go down onto the big rocks and just hang out, uh, listen to the waves crashing. And that's my favorite part. I'll take my knitting or I'll take my water coloring and it's just really peaceful for me. Um, so we did that. We came back. We started school. Uh, my son is taking on two online courses this year, which have been a lot of work. So that was a big thing adapting to that. And then, you know, just all of our other busyness that comes along with homeschooling. So I have, my plan for today is to talk about my finished objects. I have two of them. I also want to talk about some of my works in progress and some future cast-ons that I plan on doing within the next month. I also have a, a few acquisitions. I got actually quite a bit of yarn while I was in Maine. That was kind of like my main souvenir. Um, and then I've ordered, made, placed a couple orders from some et Etsy shops. And then I also thought it would be nice to feature my favorite or new to me podcast or podcast that I just really enjoy. So I also plan on doing that towards the end of this episode. I always enjoy hearing about other podcasts to check into because uh, you know there's a lot of them and you don't always know about all of them so I'm going to share a couple of my favorites as well so let's go ahead and get started and I think last time I don't I think I showed these socks to you guys last time because they were in I was in the process of making them I'm pretty sure anyway it's been long and I haven't went back to look so these I finished they're just um, plain socks and um, they've been worn, so they're not real neat looking. So this gray color is Barn Roof. That's by Willow Tree Yarns. And then the purplish blue color is called Huckleberry, and that's by Lichen and Lace. And um, I really like how these knitted up. Originally they were gonna be for me, but then I finished them and I thought, no, these need to go to my daughter, Lily. So I finished them on Sunday or Monday and I gave them to her and she has worn them since. So I had to actually go get them off of her to show you guys. But um, yeah, this is just my standard cast on 64 on a size one needle. I use nine inch circulars. And then I did 15 rounds of two by two ribbing. And then I did 60 rounds of stockinette. 
And then I used this um, modified slip stitch, or maybe it's called Eye of Partridge Heel. I really like that. I feel like it gives some extra reinforcement, and I think it looks really pretty. I always do a heel, heel flap and gusset. And then I do my um, decreases around the gusset, and then I on these I did uh, 49 rounds of stockinette, and then I kitch, kitchener stitch my toes shut. That's pretty much how I make my socks. If Unless I'm following a pattern that calls for something else, sometimes I'll do what the pattern says, sometimes I'll substitute in what I like, what I prefer. Um, my daughter and I both wear the same size socks. We both, I, she has like a seven and a half foot, I have an eight. So this fits us perfectly. So those are my Huckleberry socks, which actually aren't mine anymore, they're hers. The biggest project I have done, and I'm so happy about it, Both of my dogs are in here, so I'm hoping that they don't cause a problem. Um, one's sleeping on the bed and one's laying by the door. Okay, so I didn't even have this started. I think this was on the to cast on list last time I podcasted, but I started in the car ride up to Maine, which is a long one for us. I started the Arboril sweater by Jennifer Steingass and I finished it. And it is lovely. I put pictures of this on my Instagram. I put a picture of me wearing it, I believe. Yes. It's a, it's a little too warm to put this on today. And I don't really think it's necessary to put it on for you guys to see. But this was my first color work sweater. I was so intimidated by color work. I, I think the thing that was intimidating me, this is going to sound crazy, but I think it's because I'm a perfectionist. I was afraid about my floats. Like I was afraid that my floats weren't going to be right and that they were going to be all wonky and they were going to drive me crazy. They turned out perfectly fine. I actually, this sweater is knit from the top down. So when I cast this on in the car, um, it's a charted, of course, it's charted color work. And I, uh, I wonder if I have, so if I just, I want to show you what I what I discovered. Um, I was having a hard time with the chart because I was in the car and it was kind of cramped, and I was starting to get I was I just didn't want to get it mixed up. Um, so while we stopped for lunch, there was a Joanne Fabrics nearby. I ran over and I got washi tape, and I'm just going to show you a little bit of the pattern here. But see, as I would do my my chart I would just keep moving my washi tape so that I would I could keep track of where I was knitting that was really helpful and um, that's something that I will do I think probably all of the time now at least when it's a chart that's not real repetitive like that I really need to be careful and keep track but anyway um, yeah so I pretty much did I think I got the almost the whole yoke done on the car ride there and then while we were there, I picked up for the body, or I did the body, and um, finished it off then the last, over the last month. I did everything, I think, no, actually I didn't follow the pattern. First of all, I use it, I, I use it. <laughs> I'm going to try not to have to edit this too much because um, that adds time. And so I'm going to probably say some stupid stuff and do some stupid things and I'm just going to leave it in because I don't want to have to spend a lot of time editing. But I used a worsted weight yarn and it called for a DK weight. I was a little nervous about that, but then I'm just like, just go with it, Amber, okay? And I didn't want anything real fitted and tight, so I also left out the waist shaping. There was some decreases. Um, so I think... I might have put a couple decreases in right up here, like along the bust line, but then after that, I just I knitted straight down. Um, I don't no, I don't even think I increased for the hip because I think you de in the pattern you decrease and then you increase for the hip, but I don't think I even did that because I didn't decrease as much as it called for. I wanted this to be a really comfy, cozy sweater. I didn't want it to feel tight or restricting. I don't not like those kind of those kind of sweaters. Um, I like a looser sweater. 
So I did that and then I also did the hem different on the bottom. So I did this, I think it's called a broken rib. I think, I think that's what that's called. It's not what was in the pattern, but it's, I think it's a broken rib. And then I also put these um, side split hems. Is that what it's called? Split hems. And made the back a little bit longer than the front for a more relaxed fit because that's what I like. Um, and then I also did that same ribbing on, on the sleeves. No, I didn't do the same ribbing. I just did a two by two ribbing on the sleeves. You would think I would remember because I just literally just finished this over the weekend, but I didn't. I don't remember. Okay, so anyway, now that I did my first color work sweater, I just want to do a bunch of color work because it's so much fun. This was so much fun. It was so much fun. It wasn't boring at all. And once I figured out how to carry my floats in a nice way, like so it wasn't too tight or too loose, which didn't take that long actually, but it was just like, I just felt myself relax and it was just so fun to see the pattern appear. So I'm definitely going to be doing more color work sweaters. In fact, when I ordered this pattern, I also bought two of her other patterns. I don't remember which one's off the top of my head, but I will be doing those as well. Um, so yes, that is my Arbor Real sweater, bur sweater by Jennifer Steingas. I've already worn this out. We went out over the weekend. We just went out and got a picnic dinner and, and went and ate in the park. And um, it was chilly because the sun was almost down and um, this was perfect to wear out for that. So it made its inaugural uh, venture out into the wild over the weekend. Okay, so those are my only two finished objects. At least I think so, because like I said, it's been a while. Um, and I have been pretty busy, so I really haven't had a lot of time to do a lot of knitting or spinning. In fact, I um, spinning, I, I did one bobbin here of, um, this is Peruvian wool. I ordered this off of Knit Picks. It was, the fiber was extremely cheap, and I thought, I'm going to try it out. Uh, it's like an amber brown color and I did this at uh, in August I went and did a spinning demonstration at our local folk festival so I spun this whole bobbin while I was there and I think I may have told you that and then I have another one um, it's on my bobbin it's on my my spinning wheel which is right here and I'm not going to move it but it's it's this pumpkiny orange fiber um, oops, got some other fiber hiding out in there too. Uh, but that's what I'm spinning right now. And I have not actually, I started this at the folk festival and I haven't touched it since. And there's really not that much left to finish that off. So I'll get to it eventually. Okay. So what I want to talk about next are my works in progress. So I started this sweater Back in the summer, I have talked about it. It's the Morning Mist. This is a pattern by Annie Claire. I've This is my second one I've made. I already showed the first one. Um, I've showed this one, but I am going to do this a little bit differently because my season here to wear sleeveless and short sleeve clothing is kind of short. So I'm going to adapt this pattern to have long sleeves. So here is the body. Now, if I were to finish this as the pattern's written, basically all I would have left to do is to put a garter ridge sleeve, like a little cap sleeve here. There's the back. But what I'm going to do is make this long sleeved. And I'll do that by using short rows to shape the, the shoulder. That's a tongue twister. And I actually started this sleeve before we left for Maine, and it was going to be my car knitting project until I decided to start the weekender or not the weekender that's another one I'm knitting the arboreal sweater but I did just regular short rows the wrap and turn and I got probably five six inches down the the sleeve and I did not like the wrap and turn short rows at all I had huge holes everywhere that I did a wrap and turn. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to use German short rows because I've used those 
and I'm usually really happy with how those turn out. So I need to just put the sleeves on this and block it and then I'll have another sweater to add to my um, wardrobe. Okay, so that is in progress. And then I, I mentioned The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. I bought this pattern a while ago and after I, I forgot to tell you what yarn I used. So this yarn is shepherd's wool that I used for this. Um, this was just like an off-white color. I don't remember the name of it, but the orange is was called roasted pumpkin. And I picked this up at Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festival back in the spring. And I, I when I got the yarn, I intended to knit this because I um, already had this pattern purchased, and I was just looking for a yarn. Okay, so shepherd's wool in roasted pumpkin. It's a worsted weight yarn. Highly affordable. It's like $13.50 for a skein of yarn and the skeins are 250 yards of worsted weight. So I feel like that's really reasonable and it makes it makes knitting a sweater more affordable than some other wools that you can buy. Okay, so the reason I mentioned that is because I'm knitting The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. And that pattern calls for a um, worsted weight yarn. I had some DK tweed from Knit Picks that I was going to try to get gauge with to knit it. And then I decided I really love that shepherd's wool. It's so soft. It's 100% wool, but it's just so soft and it's affordable. And I just thought that's what I'm going to make my weekender out of. So I bought the color Petoskey Stone. So it's a marled yarn. This is the only one I don't have caked up yet. Um, and this is, uh, this is actually milled in at Stonehenge Fiber Mill, which is in Michigan. I've had several people on Instagram comment that that's, right, that's where they live, that this mill is near where they live. And um, I even had one woman who, she has sheep and she has her fiber milled there. So it's a local, local to the United States yarn. Um, so let me show you my weekender. This is a bottom up pattern and it is knit with the, so you're, you knit it and then you turn, you're, I'm at the end at some point anyway, you turn it inside out and it has the like the um, pearl bumps, and then it has a really nice seam going down the middle. But So this is what I got so far, which is not much, but hey. I just casted this on on, on Monday, maybe. It's Wednesday, so it's not too bad. Maybe Sunday. Um, okay, this is a tubular long tail cast on. And let me tell you, oh my gosh, when I first saw it, I thought, eh, I don't want to learn a new cast on. I just want to cast it on and get started. But then I thought, no, you know what? I'm going to try this. It's always good to learn something new. I absolutely love it. It makes such a nice rounded edge and it's extra, extra stretchy. It just looks really, really nice. It looks really nice. And so I, I can see myself using this tubular cast on in the future even when a pattern doesn't call for it. It's weird. It's like you do your, it's kind of like a long tail cast on only a little different, but then you do two more rows. So basically your cast on setup is three, three rows, and then you start your actual, your actual ribbing. So um, that's different. I've never done a cast on like that, but it wasn't hard. Not hard at all. It's just something new to learn. So yeah, this is what I have so far. So basically what you can you can see here when you when you're done and turn it inside out you have the pearl bumps and then you have this nice seam going down the middle of the front and the back and I'm really excited about that. I'm using a size 9 needle. I got gauge with this yarn uh, my first try which is always exciting and uh, this will be it's so soft this yarn is so soft. Guys check it out especially if you are on a budget but you don't want to use like 
Joanne fabric or Michael's yarn or acrylic yarn because that's that just isn't even fun. Okay, so my camera shut off. I forgot that after, I don't know, if, however many minutes I was filming, it will shut off. Um, so anyway, this is what I bought to make the little twigs pull over by Melody. Anyway, so I was nervous about this color because it's very green. Um, but I had a lot of you guys say, oh no, that'll look great. That'll, that'll be wonderful go for it Amber go for it so I am going for it and um, this is the worsted weight by Barrett Wool Co home I had somebody tell me like to get things to focus I need to block my face but my camera doesn't work that way I've noticed that another podcast that people will like put their hand up over their face or whatever to get it to focus mine doesn't work that way Okay, so this is the worsted weight, 230 yards and 100 gram skein, and this colorway is Big Woods. So, Big Woods to make a little twigs. And normally I'm, I am a monogamous knitter, which means that I would finish my weekender before casting this on, but I'm thinking I'm probably gonna cast this on before I finish my weekender and work on them at the same time. And actually, I feel like I'm going to be casting on at least one other project, maybe a pair of socks. Um, Olivia from This Handmade Life is coming out with a new sock pattern sometime this week, I believe. I think maybe Friday or Saturday. I don't remember if she even said what that pattern was called, but they're really pretty. She put it on her Instagram feed this week. So I'm possibly going to be casting those on, and then I'm going to talk about another smaller project that I want to cast on soon but I'm super excited to make this I know this is another bottom up sweater which the weekender is my first bottom up and this will be my second bottom up sweater I'm not sure how I feel about it because the, I like top down because I can try it on and I can decide if I want to add length or not I don't see how I'm is that possible to do that when you're doing a bottom up? I'm not really sure how that would be possible. So I just want to make sure I get the length right. That's the thing that makes me a little nervous about bottom up. So Barrett Wool Co. Beautiful green. Casting that on very soon. Okay, and then um, two other patterns. One I've already purchased and one that just recently came out but I don't have like I left my one pattern that I already have I left it down in my studio but it's um, by Alicia Plumer and they're called the antiquity mitts or antiquity fingerless gloves um, I'll link it below so I'm going to cast those on I've had that pattern for a long time but that'll be a smaller quicker project you know I'm doing all these sweaters now I want to have something small that I can just work on in the car and stuff if we go anywhere. And then Fiddlehead Lane on Instagram just released the Rubus mitts. I love them. I love them. And I have some yarn that I think is going to actually work really well for them that I'm going to show you here during my acquisition segment. Um, they, the Rubus mitts, the pictures I've been seeing online, they're just very rustic looking and they have some nice color work that's like not complicated, it's nice and simple, which I like. Um, so I'm really excited about trying those. And I was bummed because there was, she had like a 50% off pattern through a certain date in September and I totally forgot about it. I had it in my cart, meant to order them. In fact, I went to order them the one day and then I was doing it on my phone and I couldn't remember my PayPal login. So I wasn't at home. So I thought, oh, I'll do it later when I get home. And then I forgot. And then when I went back this week to order them, the pattern code was gone, but oh well. Um, beautiful. So. I'll link them below, go check them out. And um, two other things. Sylvia McFadden came out with this 
fox wedding shawl and she had this up on her on Ravelry for free for a little while I don't believe it is any longer but it is using um, chunky yarn and it's a very simple shawl but I have some um, some wool actually that I have done some natural dyeing with that I'm going to use to make this. I have, um, I, I have some, it's kind of, it's hand spun. It's stuff that I acquired when, um, a woman had passed away. She had had sheep. I talked about this on one of my previous podcasts, but she had had sheep and the family didn't want this. It was a whole humongous box of white cream colored hand spun yarn. Um, and it, it's, it like, it's thick and thin. So I think I'm going to try this with that. And I had dyed some with avocados. I had dyed some with in various shades of blues and greens using black beans. So I think that's what I'm going to use for this. Or I might just do it in the natural cream color because I didn't dye all of it. There's just, there was a massive amount of yarn. So this is not high on my priority list though because I do already have multiple shawls that I that I wear but it's just it was a free pattern thank you Sylvia McFadden that was so I love when designers offer patterns up for free um, so I definitely it's beautiful and it's simple which I love I love the look of simple classic knits and then okay so before I show you this I just want to say that I am not one of those people that goes all crazy for Christmas in October um, in fact, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving, so I like to get to Thanksgiving, not think about Christmas, not see decorations around. I like to focus on Thanksgiving, and then after Thanksgiving, like the end of November, beginning of December, then I get my mind focused on Christmas. However, I have been wanting to knit Christmas stockings for my kids for the last two years, and I always wait until the last minute. And then you can't do that. You can't wait until the last minute. And I don't even know that I'm going to get these done because I feel like this is a project I really need to just start at the beginning of the year and work on through the whole year. And, and then, because that's probably more realistic. Um, so I have three kids. Sergey's 22, Ian's 15, and Lily is 12. And so I want to make them each a stocking and I'd like to have, I'd like to knit their name in. So I don't even have the yarn for this yet. I have some Christmassy colored yarn downstairs in my studio, but I don't have enough to make three stockings. So I may start on this, I may not, but I just wanna say this was a free pattern. It's through Willow Yarns. It's called the Northern Stocking and it's designed by Ray Blackledge. So I will, um, I'll put this down below in case anybody is interested in knitting a stocking. And then there's also a book by French Press Knits that's called Comfort and Joy. And I could not for the life of me find that book. I was looking online on Amazon. Um, and I don't even know how it happened that I was, I was doing like a Google search and I was probably on page 15 or 16 or something like that. And then I found French Press Knits website and found that book on there. So it's called Comfort and Joy and it has multiple stocking patterns and they're really super cute. Some are super easy and some are more advanced. So that book is on my radar. I may end up purchasing that and then just work on the stockings throughout next year and have them for next Christmas because I feel like this is a, this is kind of maybe unrealistic to knit three of these on top of everything else I'm knitting and doing in my life. So, okay, yes. That is all I want to talk about as far as upcoming knits, projects. It's kind of all I want to talk about. Um, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to grab, get my stash of acquisitions closer to me because I have a few, I have quite a few, um, and then I will, we'll talk about those and I'm going to share some really pretty yarn with you. Okay, I have a lap full of lamb's wool. Um, when we were, so in Bar Harbor, Maine, there is a little yarn and candy shop. 
Of course I can't remember what it's called now. Sorry, can't remember what it's called. Anyway, I, I go every year. Every year we go to Maine, I go to the, Lily and I go to this little yarn and candy shop. I don't go for the candy. Actually, Lily doesn't go for the candy either because she is my little crafty girl. So we both go to look at the yarn. So this year while I was there, she had a huge selection of Lamb's Pride Worsted. And it's an 85% wool, 15% mohair. So I bought some skeins. How many do I have here? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine skeins of yarn. Oh my goodness, I cannot. Okay. So these are the colors. And the reason I bought these were because um, was because I wanted to do some color work hats. So I'm sure you guys have heard of the bobble hat. I think it's is it Donna Smith. It was it came out maybe three years ago, maybe two. So I bought yarn to do that. Um, these are the colors. It's the one with the little pasture and the sheep on it. And I've just always thought that hat is super cute. So I'm going to use these colors to make that hat. But of course, that hat is not going to use up. There's 190 yards per skein. So it's not going to use up all this yarn. So having the, I'll also be able to use this in other color work projects. I also really liked um, these two colors together. These two. This is pretty. That is really pretty. So this is a worsted weight yarn. And I was talking about the Rubus mitts, and I don't know if the Rubus mitts, I don't know the weight of the yarn used in that pattern. But if it's worsted, I also plan on using this yarn to make at least one pair of those Rubus mitts. But I also just went on Ravelry. Before I went to the yarn shop, I went on Ravelry. I found a couple of color work hats that I thought I would like to make and then I based my color and yarn uh, purchases off of those few patterns that I picked up in Ravelry. So um, that is something I'm going to do because I just love color work now ever since I did my Arboreal sweater. Yes, so all of this lamb's wool and this stuff was really affordable too. It was um, like seven something a skein. So again, affordable. All right, let me put this stuff down. Also, while I was in Maine, I went to Sherman's bookshop. Sherman's is a really cute shop. Um, it's a, it is, I think it's just in Maine and I'm pretty sure, I think it's like the oldest bookstore in Maine or something like that. Anyway, there's a, there's a nice one. There's more than one, but there's a nice one right in Bar Harbor. And so they have one side where they have more like your souvenirs and gifts and home decor and stuff like that. And then they have an, a section that has games for kids and toys and art supplies. And then the last, the third room, sorry, that was my dog coughing. The third room has books. And they had a ton of knitting books on sale this year. So I spent probably 45 minutes looking through all of them and I decided to get Free Spirit Shells because this is actually a book. It's been out for, for a while and I've had it on my Amazon wish list for just as long as it's been out. And I was able to get it for $7.98 and I actually love the shawl on the front. Um, and then there were some other ones here. Let me see if I can look through real quick. Actually, here, let me show you this. Isn't that pretty? There were some other ones that I really liked. No, I think this is cute. That's cute. It's a tiny one. It's like a sh I would say that's more of a shawlette. I love this. Maybe not in these colors, but I'm really into like tassels and the fringe. I really like that. Here's another picture of it. Okay, maybe that's that might be all that I wanted to show. Oh, here. Oh no. Where's that at? It's in the back. 
Stand by, guys. There's another really... I mean, there's lots of really cute... This is pretty. It's bigger. It's pretty nice. Really pretty cables. Okay. Oh, I love this. See? This is what I'm talking about. Simple, classic designs. I'm so not a fancy girl. Oh, this is the... Oh, my gosh. Look at this fringe on this shawl. This looks like a big cozy shawl. Here it is. This was another selling one for this book for me because I totally want to knit that shawl now. And I even really like that red color. Okay, so free spirit shawls, 20 eclectic knits for every day. I like this book. So that was what I purchased while we were in Maine. Um, but we came home and I want to give away. And so I want to tell you about that. The giveaway was by Bluebird Yarns on Instagram. They have really beautiful yarn on Etsy. They have an Etsy store. I'll link it below. And they were doing a giveaway. Um, the Dyers, I think it's a mother-daughter team, Karen and Katie. So they did this giveaway and I entered and I won and I was super excited because when I found out I won I was not having the best day anyway so that was like really exciting news but let me show you what they sent me let me dig it out here hold on it's coming apart okay so in their giveaway picture they showed these beautiful skeins these mini this mini skein set this is a single ply beautiful like their aesthetic is I just love their aesthetic okay so this was what was in the picture and then they said they would also be sending a 100 gram skein as well so I got it arrived that day I was so excited I brought it into my room I shut the door because when I open yarn purchases I like to be alone and I like to have time to just like enjoy the process so I opened it up and I found not only these mini skeins, but not only one 100 gram skein, but two. And do you know, this was like a blessing from God because first of all, like I had said, I, I had some, some tough stuff going on. Um, so I was super happy to win the giveaway. But then, and they did not even, Karen and Katie did not even know this. I had this shawl kit that they had, like the, it's a two skein shawl kit in their Etsy shop. I had this on my wish list, like in my favorites on Etsy. And they sent it to me and they had no idea. That's why I'm saying it's a God thing. So Bluebird Yarn, cute little tag. And this is their Autumn Skies shawl kit that they sent. Single ply beautiful I wish I could make my camera zoom so you can see it better but the this is gorgeous this is gorgeous I was so happy thank you ladies if you're watching like you just made my day I opened up that all this yarn all that yarn it was so exciting so exciting it made me so happy and I felt loved so that was a giveaway and then I also made a purchase um, from another indie yarn dyer who was one of my favorites and I've made multiple purchases off of her uh, Colleen from Little Lion Heads Knits Little Lion Head Knits you must check her out I love she has such an eye for color I have several indie dyers that are my favorite and she's one of them so let me show you what I got so this is um, a frame cabin a frame cabin I love the name um, I ordered this separately from the other ones I'm about to show you because she came out with a sock kit with some or a kit with someone else and I think it was a project bag and this and I didn't really want a, another project bag um, but I wanted this yarn and it's got greens and oranges some really pretty speckles um, it's just some there's some yellow in there it's a very autumn like skein of yarn so I'm going to make some socks out of this, I think. So I bought that and then she went and did a shop update and she does them quite frequently and it's very tempting when she does because I really love her yarn. 
So let me show you what I bought next. Okay, so I bought these two to go together, to go together, to go together. <laughs> so this multicolored one is called Roosevelt Island. And this mohair is called, it's actually mohair and silk. It's called Afternoon Cappuccino. And I'm going to make something and hold these two together because I think that that would look really pretty. And I got, I totally stole that idea because she posted a picture of these two on Instagram because someone else had ordered this combo. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to have those. It's beautiful. This is my first time ordering mohair. Up until this point, I really didn't care about it. But when I saw these two together, I just, inspiration hit and I just thought I need to try mohair. So, um, lace weight mohair. First time trying lace weight mohair. So I got those two to go together and then I just bought this one because it's called Little, Little, no, it's called Hints of Autumn. And I'm, I just wanted it. That's why I ordered it. I just wanted it. It's a very subtle yarn. It's got yellow, orange, some blue, brown, like a deep brown. It's really pretty. They actually look quite nice together. Um, so yes. Thank you, Colleen. Your yarn is always beautiful. Always. Always happy with my purchases. Oh, and then I forgot. So then there's another, um, there's another indie dyer that I really, really love. Her name is Ashley and she is the Blackberry Ridge. And I've showed her yarn here before because I've bought from her multiple times. Um, but this is what I bought off of her. And I bought them to go together to make a shawl together or make something, um, because they complement each other so well. So both of these are on her Briar Sock Base, which is like a merino nylon blend. This is called Play That Funky Music. Look at that green, I love it. It's perfect, that's perfect. I love that green. And then this one's called Barefoot in the Garden. So the Barefoot in the Garden actually has speckles of the, a green that looks just like this one. And then it's got some mauve, yellow, brown, Ashley, you speckle so well. Both of these ladies, Colleen and Ashley, they just have such an eye for color combinations. And, okay, I have multiple indie dyers that I love. These are two of them. I'll mention more as I think about it um, in my podcast in the future. So those are my acquisitions. And, um, yeah, I kind of treated myself. I treated myself to some yarn. Okay, so last thing I want to do is talk about some podcasts that I enjoy. Um, a couple of these I have been watching for a while, and a couple of them are rather new to me, or rather new. So the first one I want to talk about is Lerky from Fiber Tales. I've talked about her before because I test knitted her Skovmacher sweater. Um, that was back in the, the end of the spring last winter. So her podcast is called Fiber Tells and I just, I really enjoy it. So good job. Um, she just, she kind of went on a hiatus because she became pregnant. And then I seriously, I remember those days of like first trimester pregnancy. You just want to sleep or throw up or lay around. At least that's how I was. And I, I, I remember her saying that she wasn't feeling real well. So she took a little break, but she's back. She's been podcasting. I think she's had like three or four more recent podcasts. And I'm pretty sure she just put one up within the last 24 hours. Although I haven't, I can't verify that because I haven't been on YouTube this morning. Um, but I love her podcast. She uses a lot of rustic wools and natural earthy colors, which is my jam. Um, another podcast I really enjoy is Emily Boyd and she, her podcast is called Goldberry Artisans and she is, she, she's interesting to me because she is younger. I don't know her age. She's in college though. So she's college aged 
and she just knits the most beautiful projects. I don't know how long she's been knitting, but she does like advanced knitting. Um, she lives in Maine. I love Maine. Emily, can I come visit you sometime? Um, and so she's, I don't know, I just really, she's just so, she just seems so sweet. I really enjoy watching her podcasts and, um, and following her on Instagram. Another newer to me podcast is, okay, it's, her name's Taylor Owen and on her banner on YouTube, it just says a fiber podcast. So I'm assuming that's the name of her podcast. I'll link it just, I'll link it just in case. I'm going to link everything. I already told you that. I keep saying I'm going to link it. Everything is going to be linked down below. If I forget to link something and you want to know where I got it or how to find them, then message me. So Taylor Owen, she spins, she knits. I think she lives in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm pretty sure if I'm thinking correctly. Um, and she does a lot of earthy colors too and rustic yarns. And I like that. And she's often talked about her, um, process the process that she does when she's processing wool because she like me will buy raw wool fleeces and you know skirt them and wash them and card them and spin them so I always I like watching podcasts of other people that do that so I really enjoy hers and I'm not even caught up on all of her episodes and she also seemed to go on a bit of a hiatus but I just noticed recently that she does have a new podcast out so I'm looking forward to watching that one and then the last person I want to mention is actually a brand new podcast. In fact, they haven't even done their first episode. Um, it's Carrie from My Wool Mitten. And she is somebody I've been following on Instagram. In fact, she won my, my um, 500 subscriber giveaway that I had back several months ago. Um, but she's from Michigan. She actually has her fiber milled at that Stonehenge fiber mills, which is the one that does the um, shepherd's wool that I was showing you earlier. But Carrie has on YouTube on her channel, she has her trailer for her podcast. And then she has kind of like an intro to what her podcast is going to be like. And she is a shepherdess and she's a fourth generation shepherdess. And her husband is also a farmer and he's like, I think third generation or something. I could be like, mistaking on his, um, but they have sheep in Michigan and she's going to be doing a podcast more from the perspective of a sheep farmer and I'm sure she'll be showing her knitting and spinning because she does both um, so that's another one I'm really looking forward to watching when she puts her first podcast up so Carrie I want to encourage you I can't wait and I'm gonna send people over to watch your um, podcast um, because I think that's just such an interesting perspective to hear from the farmer and I think that she posted on Instagram that she her first podcast is going to include in a meet and greet with her flock so that'll be fun okay so that is everything that I want to talk about today I'm going to shut this off it's only 1207 I feel like I really whipped this one out fast that's really exciting because I have other things I need to do but I'm really glad I got to do this and um, Perhaps I will go make myself a second cup of coffee, although I hardly ever do that. I usually just have the one, but I'm feeling like maybe, maybe I'll drink another cup of coffee and then go outside for a bit because it's warm and sunny and there's blue sky and I need some vitamin D. So thanks for watching.